So let's now jump in and take a look at the actual syntax of the font family. And if we take a rule, just like this paragraph rule, first thing we start with obviously is the rule and then the property font family in a colon. After that, what we do is we specify a number of fonts. And so we start with a preferred font. This is a font we'd really like to have in our page. After that is an alternative font. So if we don't find the first font, well then we'd like to have the second font. You'll notice on the second font that I spelled it with an uppercase F, and that's because I wanted to point out that case matters. In other words, if your font is Arial with a capital A, well, you better use a capital A. That's the way you need to specify your fonts is with the correct case. And then finally, we have what we call either a generic or default font. And so if all our choices fall through and the browser really can't deliver the font, well, then we tell the font, just deliver us a font, say a sans serif font. And so this last choice tends to be that default or generic case. Now, you don't have to have just three fonts. You could have just a default case or you could just specify one font, or you could have two, three, four, however many you want. All right, so let's look at a more real example here. So again, we have our P roll. I've got the font family property, and then I've got three real fonts specified, Geneva, Verdana, Arial, and then I have the generic choice, sans serif. What happens is the browser starts with Geneva, and if it has it, it uses it. Otherwise, it moves on to the alternative, or Verdana. If that's not there, then it moves on and looks for Arial. And again, if none of those can be found, well then we'll just take whatever sans serif font the browser can supply. Now, an interesting thing to observe about these choices is Geneva ends up being common on Macs, whereas Verdana ends up being common on PCs. So you'll see that really we've specified two main choices here. If you're on a Mac, we'd love to have Geneva. If you're on a PC and you don't have Geneva, well, Verdana is probably the one that we want. And Arial actually is common on both of them. So we've got even a good fallback here that may work if we don't have Geneva and Verdana. And then finally, okay, we give up. Just give us browser what do you've got that looks like sans serif. Now that you know about how font families are specified, let's take a look at a real example. I've got a page open on my desktop, and as you can see, it's an HTML document with a head and a body, uh, an H1 heading and a paragraph in the body, and we've got style tags already set up for CSS in our head. But let's take a look at what this page looks like in the browser without any CSS at all. So I'm going to open that up in the browser. And you can see that by default, the page is displayed using a serif font. And you can tell because the letters have those little hooks on the end. Now, depending on what browser you're using and what operating system you're using, you might have a different look for your page. It turns out that the browser that I'm using, Safari, if I don't specify any font at all, the default font is Times, which is a serif font. Okay, what if we want to change that? Let's go into the CSS and add a rule for our paragraph. And we'll add a property to set the font family to first Geneva as our preferred font, and then as an alternative for Donna, and as an alternative to that, Arial. And then finally, if none of these three fonts are available, we'll set it to sans serif, because we want a sans serif font for the paragraph. So I'm gonna save that and reload the page. And you can see that now the text in the paragraph is displayed with a sans serif font. Now I'm on a Mac, so I'm seeing the paragraph displayed in the Geneva font. If you're on a PC, you might see Verdana or you might see Arial. And if your computer doesn't have any of those fonts, you're gonna see whatever default font the browser is going to use for a sans serif font. Now, what if we want the whole page to have that sans serif font? Well, if you remember inheritance and how inheritance works in CSS, we can easily make that happen just by changing the selector on this rule to body. So if I save that and reload, now the heading of the page is also in that sans serif font. But we don't have to have the whole page use the same font family. We can specify a different font for the heading as we're using for the paragraph. So let's go in and add another rule for the H1 heading. And we'll set that font family to, let's set it to a serif font. And when we reload, you can see it goes back to that times font. But what if we want a monospace font for our heading, like 
Courier New. Well, Courier New is an example of a font name that has two words. It's got a space in the name of the font. So you write the name with quotes around it, like this. And then we can specify the generic monospace font family just by typing monospace. So I'm going to save that and reload. And you can see that that changes the look of your heading quite a bit to a monospace font. It's Courier New and very different from the sans serif font that's being used in the paragraph. So just like the other rule, we're using Courier New as the preferred font for our heading. But if Courier New is not available, then the browser will choose whatever monospace font it has available. So now that you know the mechanics of how to specify a font family in CSS, you might still be wondering, how do I really know what font is going to end up on my page? Well, we're going to tackle that next.